Um, just a quick landscape on Ontario uh, to sort of level set the, the field. Uh, we're about four times BC. We're about $4.4 billion, almost 9% of the total health care spend. Uh, and we are also administering the program with about 100 people. Um, so it's a fairly tight and lean administrative ship. Um, again, drug costs, we're continually concerned about uh, the rising costs. Right now our costs are driven primarily by the growth in our beneficiary population, but we are seeing as we come off the patent cliff and uh, um, are pretty much uh, done as much as we can on the generic drug reform piece, starting to see the prices increase. Um, and you know, it's a, a concern, I think, for both private payers and for the public system. We're seeing more targeted drugs coming onto the formulary and into the healthcare systems. Uh, because they're more targeted, they tend to be at a much higher price point, which is fine on a drug by drug by drug, but as you look across the multiplicity of drugs, that it just is an overall increase in the whole cost. And on top of that, the nature of products are changing quite a bit. Um, there, people are on the uh, drug product for a longer period of time, um, more as a chronic disease uh, uh, structure as opposed to an episodic disease piece, moving more on the cancers field out of hospital and intravenous administration and into oral administration. And often these drug products are being linked with other costs in the health system, either a, a genetic test or a laboratory test. Um, and it's a struggle for us to figure out how to twin those two new pieces into the system in a good evidence-based, evidence-informed way. So. We've been dealing mainly in the last little while with the escalating drug costs through product listing agreements, and these are risk-sharing agreements that the province or the funder enters into, and private payers do this as well, enter into with the manufacturer to try and decrease uh, or split the risk uh, and balance it for appropriate use, either if, um, uh, future drug investment uh, decisions about where the drug is used and evidence sort of contributions, or straight price uh, reductions. And we use those product listing agreements in Ontario. We're probably the leader in PLAs. We use those for our general benefit as well as our exceptional access program and for our cancer drug funding that we provide through CCO. Really, we think of these agreements as ways for us to improve access for patients. That's the primary driver. Uh, and we do base up what's going into those agreements on the advice that we're receiving from our expert committees, either the Committee to Evaluate Drugs and the Pan-Canadian Drug Review that's done by CADETH, or through PCODER, which is the Pan-Canadian Oncology Drug Review process. Here's a quick snapshot of the uh, number of product listings we've entered into is since 2006. Um, it's quite considerable, and you see we can, we've been doing them for our limited access program, our general benefit program for moving products from more limited controls and into more general uh, access, um, as well as for new drugs added onto the formulary. So what have we learned? Well, these have made, these agreements have made a significant impact for us. We have been able to move forward with bringing more products onto the formulary, we believe, as a result of this. It has given us a much better ability to project uh, what our spending will be, which makes the Ministry of Finance much, much happier and the Premier much happier as they have a better sense of where our spend is going to be. Uh, and it's given us a, a better just overall management control um, window. We have definitely improved the value of the investment we're making, so we're much more tightly tying the use of the medication to where the evidence has been provided that it, there, the drug does work. So it's very much more tightly linked to what's happening in the clinical trials and the design of clinical trials, which makes the role of the drug company even more important as they're designing clinical trials, that they're thinking about not just the safety side, which was the original purpose of a clinical trial, but also the real-world uh, cost-effectiveness piece. And that, I think, is a real challenge for drug companies as they're designing trials. Uh, this is a very labor-intensive process, and it's a 50-50 process. It's a, you know, labor-intensive on the part of governments and funders, but it's also very intense labor-intensive on the part of the drug companies to be providing the information and the back and forth, and they're often checking not just within their Canadian offices, but with their international headquarters on um, the, change, the choices that they were making with the, at the negotiating table. Um, the challenge with PLAs that we're really facing is they're good for now, they are really problematic as we look forward. It becomes like the sticker price on a car. Nobody pays the sticker price on a car. 
And the other challenge we have is as drugs move to go to generic, we have a price that's embedded in a product listing agreement, but that's not transparent to the generic um, manufacturer. And as they're making a decision about whether or not they're going to invest in that product, it's hard for them to understand what their um, value return will be. Uh, and I think that problem is not just an Ontario problem, it's a national problem, and it's not just a national problem, this is a global, global problem, because worldwide, this is the for, this strategy that most jurisdictions are using. So it's buying us some time, but I think at an international level, there needs to be another solution to help us bring forward the issue of affordability. Because patient groups, uh, especially where there's a fair amount of turnover, um, tend to be unfamiliar with sort of the decision-making process that we go through and the timelines that are associated with that. I think the most important thing is it's a, essentially a two-step process. There's the Health Canada review that says that a drug can be sold in the country, and that can take up to two years, and it's a completely non-transparent process. So as drug plans and payers across the country, we don't know what's in that, what's been submitted to Health Canada. We don't know where it is at the stage of review, and we don't know when it's going to come out. We also don't have access to any of the information that the drug company is providing as part of that process. CADETH, which is the Canadian Agency for Drugs, Technologies and Health, does do some liaison work with Health Canada to try and get a feel for those, but again, it's not an official transparent view. Then we have another year where it's in our national drug review process, and then from there it goes fairly quickly. Uh, in Ontario, it takes about a month to two months after the national review process for there to be a recommendation to the executive officer about whether or not we should be paying for a drug. And then it gets into a very un undefined time period as we're negotiating back and forth with the manufacturer. And as I said, that's partly the manufacturer and the time limit they take and uh, the province and ours. Um, we have been working quite a bit more closely together across the country on the Pan-Canadian Drug Pricing Alliance, so working with our counterparts in each of the other provinces to negotiate one single product listing agreement. This is a huge transformation in the system, quite a uh, tremendous amount of cooperation. Uh, in the absence of movement at the national level on national pharmaceutical plan, the premiers agreed that they would try to chip away at some of the fundamentals underneath a national plan to see if we couldn't lay the foundation, show that we can do this, and demonstrate progress so that we could re-engage in that bigger discussion. Um, the goal is to increase access across the country. There are some jurisdictions that just don't have the negotiating power that Ontario or British Columbia might have at the table. And this is a way of leveling that out. It also, by working together, makes a single voice and over time should help us streamline the resource intensity that's going into the negotiations both on the government side because it's 13 different governments doing this, and on the manufacturer side, because they don't have to do it in 13 different locations. Um, and by, in, by creating greater consistency across the country, there's less of the um, challenge back and forth about the perceptions of uneven, uneven coverage, and at least we've dealt the foundation of what is the purpose and setting in which a product should be used. Then uh, we've done seven products so far, which uh, may not sound like a lot, but it's a, it's a huge amount. It's um, demonstrating mainly, it's helping us identify where our gaps are between the different provinces, but also how, what's the process of talking to each other. Uh, and we have about 13 more that are actually either under active discussion or uh, about to be entering in through the discussion. Basically, every new drug product that now comes through uh, for listing, for approval to be sold in Canada, we are looking at as provinces to say, is this something that we have enough commonality across the country that we want to move forward on that drug product? Uh, and so that is, uh, I think, a significant step forward, and I feel very confident about the level of cooperation and understanding that we have now all developed about each other's plans through this and the success of this. Uh, we are now, uh, we've got a, um, an RFP out on the street to bring in a consultant to help us look at, okay, so how do we now move this out of uh, a demonstration phase and into more of a, um, a permanent structural governance uh, piece? And so uh, through that work that will happen over the next six to seven months, the consultant will be engaging with all of the provinces about our structural challenges and with uh, key stakeholders throughout the system to help inform what should we be doing to formalize this governance. Do we actually need an agency or do we have the capacity within provinces if we set up a governance structure that balances off decision making to be more streamlined? 
I am having the generation of government uh, that I have grown up in, I don't jump to an agency as the solution uh, because we've had lots of challenges with agencies over time. Uh, and I do think that there, a stru another structure doesn't necessarily add to the, the value. So here's the big challenges we've encountered across the country. Different drug plan structures. We have different places where we put in markup. We have different uh, def definition of who our beneficiaries are. Some of us operate under legislation or regulations. Uh, Ontario's, I, I think, quite fortunate in that they've taken the decision making out of the political arena and invested it in the public service. So the executive officer actually makes the decisions about which drugs are added, and that's unique in the country. Uh, we have different uh, processes for payment, different formularies, so the mix of drugs that are covered in one province can be quite different than another, which leads to a challenge, particularly if I use the oncology space. How do you add a drug and affect the lines of therapy? It will be very different in British Columbia, say, than in Ontario. So those are the things that have, were the biggest hurdle getting started into this process. Um, the lack of a formal process in governance has been a challenge, and so that's what we're looking to address through this piece of uh, consulting work. Uh, and the uneven participation. So you don't, not every province has to be in on every negotiation, which leads to a little bit of a challenge on the who's on the teleconference for which drug product at which time. Just pure logistics. Um, and that leads to uh, a resource burden. But as I said, we are hoping to the, address that as we move forward over time. And with six seconds left for future vision, um, let's work at being more strategic, more comprehensive, a more future-looking uh, view. As um, Barb said this morning, the uh, drug programs across the country are working much more closely than they have in the past. Uh, and so we are building a level of trust that will move us along on that front.